Welcome back. Well, taking a look at the Springfield Armory 911, a nice little subcompact single stack 380. Very handsome little guy. That's what's coming up next on GB Guns. Uh, of course, as always, taking a look at what all comes in the box. The gun is in this bag. More on that in a minute. We have our chamber brush and lock, magazine with a finger rest, sample of Lucas gun oil, and then a nice little folder to uh, keep everything nice and tidy. All right, we've got our Lucas oil, an offer for a grip laser for this gun, more Springfield material, and here's the manual. We'll take a look at what colors sort of they used. So they went with photos, nice and clear. Looks like they break things down very clearly with their photos. We have loaded chamber indicator. Looks like good descriptions on everything, how to replace and install fiber optic in the fiber optic front sight. I'm kind of giving away some of the interesting details of the gun. Get this out of the way and take a look at so inside the zippered case which is a nice touch we open up we've got a spot for id and you notice what's holding the gun is actually a pocket holster that velcros in that's a really nice touch and slot of elastic here to be able to carry the spare mag there's our gun we've got the chamber flag still in it get that out and let's take a look at this little guy i'm gonna have to zoom in so the 911 or 911, if you're a Porsche fan, is a little pocket gun that uh, handles and looks a whole lot like a 1911. We can see it's clear there. We also have a loaded chamber indicator here that would pop up if there was a round in the chamber. And we'll take a look at if we've got magazine ejection or release. Certainly ejection. If I go at an angle, it's almost like you're checking air pressure on something. So I got that out of the way. Nice stainless steel made in USA magazine. Then let's follow our protocol and start at the front of the gun. You can see we have a bit of a target crown on the barrel. Slide to frame has a little bit of side to side. No vertical. Got the 911 label engraved nicely on there and Springfield Armory up top. You notice these are not fiber optic sights. These are actually night sights. Smooth under the dust cover and the front of the trigger guard. You see a noticeable relief down here to help you get as much flush as you can on the gun. Textured trigger, some nice stippling there for traction on the front strap. And it actually parallels nicely with the cuts on these G10 style grips. We have an external safety. Take a look at that trigger. Comes back a little bit to a wall. Breaks. It pivots downward slightly. It's not quite a straight back pull. But it feels close enough. Our reset is uh, about like you'd expect from a 1911-esque single action. Trigger pull weight. I'd say is appropriate for a carry gun. It's a little heavier, but breaks very cleanly. Our slide serrations are plenty deep. Safety is ambidextrous. Even a little bit of a taper there to help with getting your magazine in. A little bit of texturing along the bottom of the back strap. Looking at slide to frame fit very snug in the rear, very tight fit. And there's our sight picture with those three dot night sights. I love that that front sight has that brilliant, I mean, almost glowing on its own circle around the tritium. And we've got a U-notch rear. There is a slight edge here for single-handed operation, but that's gonna be tough on a single action where we've gotta get the hammer out of the way. They at least made the attempt there. As far as hand fit, now I've got large hands. Those of you that watch regularly know that. When I go finger straight, I'm almost at the muzzle, but not quite. So still safe there. I can get two fingers or a finger and a half around the gun. 
and then everything else hangs off. This flush fit magazine, of course, doesn't add any extra support, but this extended magazine with the hook there allows for two and a half fingers, enough that I feel comfortable holding it. It is a small, small, lightweight gun. Be interesting to uh, see Maddie shoot this with her smaller hands. Next, we'll field strip the gun and take a look inside. So to field strip this little guy, we're gonna want to, of course, make sure it's clear. Take a look inside that chamber. You want the hammer back. That makes it a lot easier to operate the slide. You can see I can just squeeze my, with my finger now. Push it back until that rounded spot on the slide fits over a little notch on your slide stop. And then you're gonna push on this back side of the pin here. Gotta get that lined up. This built, gun is built nice and tightly. Oh, I just popped it back in. Sometimes you can use the edge of a magazine to catch and pull up a little bit. Keeps sliding back in on me. There we go. That'll loosen up over time. Now our slide is off of our frame. We can take a look at the frame. Very nice machining. Little fleck of brass that was in there. That's probably from uh, test firing. Now we can take out our guide rod, which is a metal guide rod. <laughs> Despite how lightweight the gun is, it's nice that they have a steel guide rod that helps uh, keep muzzle flip down by adding a little weight up front and a non-captured flat recoil spring. I like the non-captured type when you might be tuning your uh, gun to a specific load. You can go with uh, stronger or softer springs to make things slightly easier. Little bitty feed ramp. Nice, tight little construction. To look, take a look inside the slide, we can see that we have a trigger safety there. Looks well built. This will be a fun one. It's guns this size can sometimes be a challenge for me with uh, my larger hands, but uh, this gun, I have a feeling is going to be very fun to shoot. See that piece pops up there, pushes down with the finger. Just gotta tuck it in when you're reassembling. And then looking through this, wind, this hole here, you can see, there you go, that helps. When you see clear through it, that's when you're gonna to want to drop your pin in and just kind of let it hang. Pull the slide back the rest of the way and that's when you position to get that slide stop back in the way. Do a quick function check. Everything runs fine and the gun's ready. We do have a variety of defensive loads. I don't remember the range of weights, but uh, defensive loads and ball ammo that will run through this to see how it functions. Looking forward to getting this out to the range. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I know a lot of people when it came out said, oh, so-and-so already did it, etc., etc." Yeah, but it wasn't a Springfield. And some folks love their Springfields. My first gun was a Springfield. I still have it, first pistol. It's this rather different looking 1911. I say different because you see that cut comes over some of the lettering. That's because this started life as a 1911A1 GI model. I sent it into the custom shop. They put a lot of their TRP work on it. The TRP was brand new concept at the time, but I had some extra custom done to it, like this super fine checkering front and rear. And uh, I shot this gun a lot. <laughs> it was a tack driver. Uh, I just retired it after it had had uh, well, so many rounds through it that it started to loosen up over time, but uh, I've held on to it because it was my first handgun. And so Springfield holds a special place for me. <laughs> this guy feels almost like a toy in uh, weight and size comparison to this big old formerly GI 1911. So it'll be fun to take it out to the range. Looking forward to it, and we hope to see you guys out there.